Welcome to the Finder of Lost Things, exploring your superpowers of trust, healing, and transformation with me, Hannah Belton. My brother, Christian, disappeared in Mali, Africa in 2003. He disappeared without a trace. We lost his story. We didn't have closure. We lost so much. I was fighting and searching to find Christian when actually I just needed to sit in stillness and attract him in. I was so resistant to doing this, but I had to surrender. It's a process of trusting and finding the lost pieces and and integrating them. This podcast will uncover the process that Christian and I went on to find the lost things, him, and to find the parts of me that were missing. And we were destined from the start to tell our story into the dark. For we were born to a great white shark. Hello, hi, welcome. Come on in. Come on in for the last time. Come and sit around the fire. Oh dear, I can't believe actually this is the last show. We've been doing it for six months and um literally been going through the transcripts uh with with Laura who you're going to meet in a minute and we've literally been speaking for 23 hours <laughs> throughout the six months there's been an awful lot of material um and uh I, when I write a book because I've been writing books for for many years now I always leave the introduction right till the end and also the conclusion right till the end so you write the whole book and then the introduction kind of brings in themes that you're going to explore. And I know when I first started in the first episode, I kind of knew where we were going. My my intention was to be completely honest about the story between Christian and myself and our healing and transformation to give you all the gory details and actually I gave you more than I had I was originally thinking I was going to um so I hope I well I know I've achieved what I wanted to do which was to completely tell our story and have it open in honor to a wider audience um I asked I'm going to introduce Laura now actually it seems like she's going to come on straight away so if we, if you remember back from the first episode, um, I had Laura Gardner on with me and Laura wrote our theme tune, The Great White Shark. And this, I think the words came first to Laura, just downloaded out of the blue. And then she put the words to music and she got in touch with me and she said, look, Hannah, I've got this song I think it's for you and Chris it sounds like it's describing you and you and your brother's journey um do you want to hear it and I was like yes please and then it became our theme tune so I'm just going to invite Laura on now because Laura has had the the task (laughs) of going through all the transcripts of the 23 shows that we've done so far and actually helping me pick out like all the juicy details from those shows that were there to pass on to you as the listeners so hi Laura thank you so much for coming back on my pleasure oh it feels like a full circle it 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 only had to be you that had to come on in the last show there was there was nobody (laughs) else it was going to be well I just want to start by saying that it did not feel like a task to go through the transcripts it felt like an absolute honour and I felt like um, I just had an absolute kind of um, injection of all of the wisdom of the last six months that you've been bringing across with all of your amazing guests that you've spoken to so yeah it was an absolute pleasure to do that oh thank you I mean we should actually probably start off I I we started off I think Christian and I, we did almost eight shows together just telling our story, didn't we? I think from from memory, it was almost like a 
a straight telling from the beginning to the end. And then all these amazing guests started to come into my life. Um, and as Laura alluded to, they also brought their own stories. They brought their own wisdom. And actually that was a part of the gift for me. I'm gonna talk about how this podcast has been a gift from my brother to me um, a bit later on. Um, but all the wisdom that they bought, we were actually able to identify some main themes which have been running through the through the podcast over the over the six months so maybe we should kind of pull those apart I know you Laura you identified sort of two main areas didn't you the the grief walk and then also the, a new way of living yeah it, it became clear that there were these sort of two themes that one was very much about dealing with a moment of crisis and, you know, a sort of healing process of going to those dark places that you need to go to in order to actually process grief after loss, whatever that loss may be. And I think that was covered really nicely as well by some of your guests who really highlighted that a loss doesn't necessarily have to be a bereavement. It can be loss of a lifestyle, loss of finance, loss of relationships, even if the person is still living. Um, so there was that aspect of it and there were certain themes that kept recurring you know there's definitely a pattern of you know how people deal with grief in a constructive way and then there was the theme of sort of the container for that and the support that you almost need in the background and just having that way of life and a way of living and a way of seeing the world that perhaps we don't naturally tend towards these days it was very much going back to traditions and rituals and community and really having that as the support to help people deal with that crisis moment that you know can come to us all yeah i think that's it's so important isn't it but we we obviously chris and i talk about oh it was a grief journey for us a grief walk um but loss especially in the pandemic now and and like loss events happen all the time it's not just uh the major ones it's 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 almost like daily losses certainly in covid it's like you suddenly lose your freedom of movement it's it's like not it doesn't seem major maybe at the time but you are losing things aren't you or and and just how to how to recognize that and then treat it as a grief or a loss um because a major theme was it's with myself and with, with the guests was actually you have a grief and what do you do with it you stuff it down you don't have time to deal with it you're running on adrenaline that came across a lot didn't it sort of just totally misunderstanding the grief and and what it what they were going through absolutely and sometimes not even realizing that it hadn't been dealt with that was a really common theme mm. of people thinking that you know they've gone through loss and they've felt what needed to be felt they think and then all of a sudden they realize that there's this I think Ursula Decker put it really nicely that there's this kind of cavern that she used to revisit every time something else then happened in her life that reminded her of her loss which was the loss of her father and it's that recognition that actually you haven't gone to those depths yet you need to really visit them and the fact that it's an active process and that it really needs to be considered in that way Oh, I just got chills when you said active process because that's something that you picked that out and I hadn't really noticed it before but the distinction between loss which feels well I, can you describe it the distinction between a loss and a, and a and a grief like being active yeah I think you know the loss is the event that happens and then the grief and I think again this was Ursula Decker who pointed this out was that it can feel that the grief is going to be revisiting that loss Whereas actually going through the process of grief, because it is a process rather than an event, it actually does the opposite. You know, you, you go back to it and it stops feeling like loss every time you are reminded of that thing that has happened. The grief is actually the remedy to it. And it's not something that is going to make you feel worse. It's going to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that sort of process, that grief walk, you have to face it and to move through it. Um, yeah. there's no other and we kept saying it's like there's no other way of dealing with with loss um the event like grief is an active thing and and this this idea of the ritual I mean it also struck me that we have been sitting in 
a circle. I, mean, I never, when I first even mentioned on the first episode, you know, come in, come and sit around the fire. I don't know where that came from. I mean, I know now, but that process, we have literally been every week sitting in a circle. Uh, you know, Nikki um, Sheffress, we talked about sitting in her circle and, and the importance of a supportive circle where you can share and we we all need that support don't we on this this active grief journey definitely and that was something that was brought up by a couple of other people I think Sophia mm -hmm. Christie brought that up about being surrounded by a community and um someone else did as well I can't remember Louise now, Louise Adams it. definitely yes, mentioned was. yeah mm -hmm. definitely yeah it's like this misconception that grief is a very personal journey whereas actually having that support is really essential because you know it is something you have to walk through and why not have someone to hold your hand yeah yes exactly <laughs> very important <laughs> um, and I hope actually this show I, I know a lot of people have been listening and, and commenting to me personally about how they've uh, found uh, I don't say solace but they found comfort that they've also found inspiration and uh, and um, like a feeling that they're not alone um, through the great grief process listening to to what I've been through and guests have been through so um you know that's been a beautiful thing to to witness because we we need to be held absolutely and whether that's first of all from the non-physical um but then also in the physical we kind of need both healing on but that's it like healing both sides in the realms that was a theme that came through as well Obviously, yeah. Chris had to heal as I had to heal. We kind of healed together. Um, and, and I hope this show has, has really opened people's eyes to the possibility and the necessity of healing in both realms. Yeah, it, it did seem like that was a really important message that was coming up. And just the fact that there is that ability to just deal with things and help you know people who are in spirit to have that peace as well as for us in the physical to, to find that as well for ourselves yeah and then that rippling down through the we talk quite a lot about the seven generations you know ancestrally and also going forward mm. like we can make the choice and the decision it's our responsibility that came quite through quite a lot wasn't it that sort of self-healing is a responsibility for ourselves um but it ripples out in every direction yeah yeah definitely and it is it seems like a sort of quite an onerous thing at first but actually the importance of it is just paramount and there is so much support as you say you know it's, it's not something you have to do on our own completely no and I think like certainly for myself my my soul and my my and Chris and, and Chris and you know we we had to do this like this was there was no way we were going to get around not doing what we did like the healing and transformation we just kept it would have just kept coming back and back and back um there was we had no choice you just have to do these things sometimes yeah. and and like you say it's like it sounds so onerous and i know ursula was a brilliant example um you know the thought of having to heal her grief was crippling um but actually doing it we went through she and i went through off off not on the podcast but we i worked with her for quite eight weeks I think and we went through her grief and released it um but it was such a joyful and and you know hard but joyful and um and in the end a liberating experience and I suppose that's why I notice your uh, jumper you've got the uh the butterfly on your jumper mm -hmm. yeah I thought that was a nice symbol of transformation <laughs> exactly uh, I think that's the the purpose of all of this has been a rebirth I'm like hearing the purpose has been a rebirth um for Christian and for Chris and I but also hopefully for for listeners as we've gone along I know you've you've kind of been well you've been instrumental in the whole of this podcast Laura because <laughs> you were obviously did the theme tune for us you were the one that was given the words and the, and the music and it's Sorry funny, about actually. that. But... <laughs> <laughs> Again, an honour. Um, but it's funny you mentioned the rebirth because I was really unsure about there's a line um, where it mentions you were born again. And I wasn't quite sure about it. And then 
I, I know I'd asked you at the time, you know, is there anything that doesn't feel quite right? But um, yeah, throughout the course of the podcast, that seems to be something that has come through is that it, it actually was a rebirth on many levels, both for, I know you've mentioned for you and for Christian, and I'm sure many people listening as well. And, and I've really felt the impact of that too. And that's why I felt very strongly to wear this <laughs> because I feel like I've been journeying with you and really getting so much from every episode and especially following through the seasons and being prepared for you know paying attention to what might be happening at that time of year and I have to say it's been really interesting to take note of that and to see what actually comes into my awareness oh oh is there anything that you want to share or about what's been happening in the last six months well I mean I've, I've taken some leaps of faith um I was in a different job when we last spoke um as I think yeah and <laughs> um, so I actually just before one of your episodes one week I sort of had this feeling of you know well, maybe maybe I should stay and then I got this like whoosh of oh I'm getting it now Laura I have to say <laughs> <laughs> I, I just it. knew <laughs> yeah it was just this knowing that there was something else that I needed to be doing something something bigger that I had to trust and just take a step forward on and I did do that and yeah really honestly it really did help to have that that guiding of the seasons and being aware of what energies might be around and to be paying attention to those and really utilizing them for good you know to 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 drive and and build what was happening because it, it felt like it carried me along a bit and just gave me so much reassurance that you know this was a good time for things to be going the way they were good well yeah and now we're, we're in this long days time and we're going to go into the ripening time so in uh, at the end of july so we're like brilliantly paced placed for everything all the work we've done during the year if you've been following along the podcast since january you know uh, and sort of taking note like laura has uh, mm-hmm. you're now going to be in this position where you're going to have an amazing launch pad for for what's coming next and to really reap the benefits of all the work you've done in the last six months um yeah was there anything else about the uh, about the song that you downloaded there was was there something else that you you were there was i know so, oh is it side by side there was one That's the other like, line yeah so yeah i put this this line in because the way that the words came it was sort of originally intended to be about a friend of mine and a heart connection and I think I said this in the the first episode when we spoke um but then suddenly had this just idea that actually when I had this great white shark which just came out of nowhere I just thought maybe maybe this is the Halloween Christian so I followed that and started to put the words together with that in mind and yeah this idea of you both living side by side came in and at the time I thought you know that's that seems like a very physical concept and I wasn't quite sure what that was about but it did feel really right and mm-hmm. then I when I was going back through the transcripts I think it was um something that you'd maybe done with Christian writing and um, channeling and it, it mentioned that you were living side by side and I got so many chills at that just thinking yeah, that, that was absolute confirmation for me that there was influence in there from Christian or from spirit somehow that it, it just came came through from there. Yeah, I mean, there's I've, I'm going to mention something else as well now. I've suddenly remembered, gosh, some, so much to say. But yes, like that, that physicality, I mean, Chris, like he's dropped in over the weekend. Um, am I going to say this now? Yeah, why not? We're in the right place for it. So this weekend, um, I think I talked about in a couple of episodes ago about um, being a wayfinder. And that was the kind of new alchemizing grief and, and that sort of title that was label had sort of changed a bit to, towards that as a way shower. Um, and I had um, a sound healing at the weekend, or actually it was on Friday with a lady called Samantha Parker, Sam. And I'd met her through this group um, and I, she offered or she was offering sort of sound sound healing. And I thought, oh, well, that would be a really good idea. Some, you know, something I've never done before. I'm coming to the end of six months. I'm tired. <laughs> I need to have a sort of clearing 
um, and I need to sort of get some clarity about what's going forward. So the intentions, uh, so we did it over Zoom um, and she sings beautifully, much like yourself, Laura, actually, this is interesting. She uses her voice as a healing tool. Um, yeah, this is interesting for you. Um, and the intention was set to, to clear and to get some clarity on, on moving forward. And during the session, she was, uh, uh, Sam was singing and um, I was sort of lying there thinking, this is strange, not, nothing particularly is happening. I was just enjoying the, during the sort of meditation and, and relaxation of it. And then suddenly Chris came in and he was literally, I was lying on the, on the bed and he was literally physically, I, I swear he was, it was like he was physically lying next to me on my left because he always comes in on the left. And he was then, he threw out the sound therapy, which was weird, but beautifully weird. He was showing me that our connection is, is in the heart, but it's also now in the third eye. So it's, it's like um, imagination and um, uh, inner, inner seeing. So he will, from now on in future, he will be feeding me more stuff. I mean, it's going to be much stronger. Um, and then he then showed me on the clarity moving forward. Um, he then introduced me to a, a, an, an energy on my right, who was very, very physical as well, felt masculine. And it appears that, um, yeah, we are going to be moving forward with uh, I was like sandwiched in between Chris and this other energy. And that is how we're going to move forward. So, um, so there's going to be much more creating. I'm going to have a lot more time and space to create things uh, is, is essentially what the first sort of set of steps are. So he is, it was so physical, so physical. So that side by side is a perfect word, wording. So that was given straight at the beginning, wasn't it? Yeah. And there was, I was, I was actually sort of thinking about this. I was really surprised how many gifts I've actually been given through this podcast. So I thought, <laughs> so naively, that I would just come on and it would be six months of talking and so. Uh, basically being in service to, to to the audience and anybody who's listening um who could resonate with our story they would take little bits and pieces whatever they needed out of each episode but actually i can now see and it's it's actually christian it's chris's um birthday week so he was his birthday was on the 7th of july which was a few on friday i think it was and I didn't actually realise until I was doing the transcription from Louise's episode. So Louise <clears throat> Adams was our death doula who came on the last episode and she was like, there was something so um, translucent about it, if that's the right, I can't really describe it. Um, but she was kind of like the last guest that I had been introduced to and Chris has literally been working so hard on this podcast behind the scenes. And the whole six months has been a gift from him to me, for sure. Um, he's, as I say, bought me, bought me guests just to share their stories so I don't feel alone. Oh, I'm getting emotional. So they've been honestly and beautifully sharing their stories and I've been going yeah that's what happened to me like I'm not alone we're not alone in this world there are so many other people who are experiencing the same as us on a physical and non-physical level um and it's and in but unless you talk about it and unless you're out there talking about it people can't find you they don't know where you are and but yeah, this platform, this oh, that's unusual name, unusual term. This platform, this podcast, has really allowed people to come into my life. And I, yeah, Chris has shown me that I am not alone, for sure. Um, and certainly with Louise's 
he's he showed me several th- i don't think i'm going to share them but he's shown he sh- in that episode he shared with me several things about his i suppose about his choice of death um a- and um the timing as well and and all these little he's given me lots of like the last little threads to tie up you know anything that was slightly not writing I, I couldn't quite understand I couldn't quite grasp he's given me the the information through listening to the guests so that's been incredible um and also he's I've got to find it oh no it's here look um I was gonna I'm just gonna introduce this now I don't you if you're listening to this obviously you can't see this but it is a it's quite a thick perp perspex translucent triangle like it's not 3d it's two what would you call that 3d 2d it's not it is 3d it's 3d it's it's like just a triangle it's not a prism so it's just a triangle it's like a cross section of a prism thank you laura (laughs) i'm glad someone's (laughs) someone's their geometry (laughs) anyway it's not it's not big it's what five centimeters eight centimeters tall let's say eight centimeters and I found this on the our dining room table the day after Chris's birthday now normally Chris on his birthday he gives me something I always get something in the post something random like socks or there's always something but this year he seems to have manifested this (laughs) because nobody knows where it came from my family don't know uh where it's come from anybody who sent me something in the last week i have been in touch with them just to see if in the packet they put this triangle in and they haven't um so i'm just gonna that's all i can put it down to is it's manifested gift from chris um now the triangle if um in the episodes we always talked about a triangle being the balance of love knowledge and power and i take this as my sign that at the end of this podcast at the end of the six months um i now have all the love all the power and all the knowledge that i need to now in a balanced way in a very balanced way to now move forward um and this energy that's on my right that Christian showed me, Chris showed me, is very much to do with moving forward. Um, uh, yeah, so the person who who is the right energy is a person who has who has the financial means to support, but uh, and is looking for a purpose. So I'm going to going to leave that there. I, I wasn't going to mention that, but I'm going to mention <laughs> mention it now because Chris and I are purpose is now to extend obviously what we've done over the over the podcast the podcast has been chris's gift to get me to the point where i am ready for whatever's going to come next and and to expand our message a lot further out um and actually this um you i don't know if you picked up on it laura um but certainly the journey of six months like the the duration of of what we've been doing here was what Chris was originally planning to do in Africa. He had a six month journey ahead of him. So I, I, I hadn't even clicked about that until it came into my head while I was preparing for the show. And there's a beautiful symmetry in that because Chris obviously uh, was going to Africa to follow in the footprints of of Mungo Park he was going to write a book about his experience but he also had the film camera um, which we've talked about a lot Um, so the idea for him was to come back after his trip with all this information and he was then going to write his book he was then going to create his film um, and obviously that never happened for him but it feels like because I've, I'm just hearing now, it's like because I've done what I've done, which is essentially gone to find him and bring his story back 
and also rebirth both of us like that is now the story that we have to tell and all the, this podcast uh, has been filmed so all the films are on youtube also there are 30 films that i've done over the years last few years which basically describe our journey i mean they are literally me talking to camera as i'm realizing uh you know some major thing about us our, <coughs> our journey and and they're very they're very raw there's no staging at all the sounds okay but some of the videos are a bit a bit dodgy but it essentially shows our all our story it shows our grief walk very clearly and 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 how i began to channel chris and how we what we do now how that developed so i do feel going forward we're gonna we've got so much information i know laura you you realized how much information we have <laughs> we have at <laughs> our fingertips and um like how to turn those into a book and a film um, and i do feel that's where we're we are headed because we have all this information um and, and <laughs> yeah and and there's so much good in it. i mean like you won't see this if you're listening as well but this is laura this i've printed this out that's just a section of our of all the the quotes and the the information that we've got through the podcast um it's very layered isn't it there's so many layers to this that need um further exploration i think yeah, I was having a quick look through actually before we came on air and I think even within the themes, there are more themes. So it's been broken down as sort of stratified. <laughs> but yeah, there were sort of more and more connections. I think the more, the more it's the more you go deeper, there are so many different parallels and so many commonalities in the experiences of the people that you've spoken to. And I think that's really beautiful, you know, like you were saying, it's you're not alone in the experience that you've had and I think it, it really is wonderful to be talking about all of this and that's something that came up as well repeatedly was just the need to speak out loud about these kind of experiences and to make it more commonplace that people are having these open conversations and sharing what they've gone through and, and normalizing that sort of being open about grief because that's the only way that it can pass through you and and then become this transformation yeah and it is a I, there was some comment i i think it was very early on i i was talking about or ursula was talking about grief being seen as a painting um and that you find the beauty in in the painting even though uh, you know you've had a loss but you find the beauty within it and and the gifts and and what you gain from that as well you know we we go through this and so many people actually in the podcast we have been talking about the gifts of loss um or the gift of and the gift of grief because grief really is a gift if you want to see it that way and open it open it up and 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 have a different perspective and and what came through so much was the need for a ritual and the need for like someone like ourselves as way showers to like to really give people a I keep seeing this picture of a lighthouse that you know it is it's a, a like a guiding out of the grief out of the pain and the darkness because we were there <laughs> you know we were there stuck there and we found the self-healing you find the way into the light but as we now have done the process we can shine brightly you know and and draw people in into into the light and i guess show them the all the mis the mistakes and the u-turns and the you know the the blocks that we had on our journey like how to overcome them and and to to do the grief walk a lot quicker yeah i think that came through quite strongly as well was just you know so many people had been doing it in the dark basically that's the opposite isn't it and feeling their way through without understanding what was expected what was normal there was a lot around you know misconceptions of how Hollywood portrays grief I think that was something mentioned by mm. Rochelle Bug about you know how she thought grief was going to happen how it was going to be this sort of flash thing but actually the fact that it becomes revisited when you least expect it and actually a friend of mine um 
she lost an aunt and her cousins described uh, what they experienced as sneaky grief. You know, you think, you think you've got over the worst or you think you've got over a spell of, you know, feeling low and then mm. suddenly something will happen, something in life and it just sneaks up on you again because, you know, it doesn't just work in one big bout. It's not like it's over. It's a real process to go through layer by layer. And I think something else that I think it was also Rochelle brought up was the fact that you're not given more than you can handle at the time. And it was like her her brain and her you know inner intelligence knew what she could handle with at any one moment and gave her little pieces of it to deal with. And I know that's something I've experienced as well. You know, it's that sense of, oh yeah, you know, I'm in a safe space now. Um, and I think Ursula Decker mentioned that, all these, <laughs> all these little threads that are so common across the stories. That, and I know I've heard you say that as well, that you know, you only get what you can handle when you can handle it. And those those opportunities to heal will come at the right time when you've got the right support around you. Yeah, totally, totally. It does come in layers, thank goodness. Otherwise, well, you wouldn't cope with it. Like I couldn't have coped with all everything happening at once. It that just doesn't happen. And I think that's maybe um also stops people from doing a grief walk because they think they're going to be totally overwhelmed I mean I was I was the same that's the thing I was the same as all of that everybody you know you think I I can't cope with this because it's I'm just it'll just kill me I I haven't got the capacity to deal with it and and you will never be given more as you say more than you can you can hold and you are always given I know we did a we've downloaded an emergency grief kit um which is available on on the youtube channel the finder of lost things um and also within rays which is our community um there were three films and it was literally you are not being given more than you can handle the whole the the three films are full of that They're, they were downloaded i downloaded them from what i called the creator that was who was um who who introduced themselves to me um and it literally helps um it helps you get into a balanced state like the triangle i think we talked a lot in that in that film actually about the triangle um and how to you know the, your way of living you have to be balanced and strong before you even start doing the grief course uh the grief walk and that that came certainly for me i couldn't start until i was strong enough um and you know that's part of nature that's part of meditation that's self-care that's all these things that and flow being in flow and acceptance and sort of surrender um which uh, when i thought about it i was like i can't do any of that but you i was made to surrender in the end <laughs> like you it things keep coming up challenge after challenge after challenge in the end you go right i give up because i cannot cope with this now. <laughs> There were a lot of stories actually where that was reflected. Again, it's this commonality of the experience and um, people being given further loss events. I'm trying to think who it was. Is it Karen Chaston? Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. After being made redundant after losing her son. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just finally recognizing that actually that was part of the gift of what she was being given was this opportunity to go to these places that she hadn't been to before and to really return to what was her calling um, to do something that wasn't just the rat race of the corporate world. It was something much deeper. And it was only when she was forced to surrender that, you know, that lifestyle that she was able to then find a much more fulfilling way of living and and start being in that serving role. I think that's it's quite common as well for people to find that when they go through that journey. Yeah, certainly. Well, we had, um... Rochelle, she had a car accident and ended up in the same hospital that her mum was uh, a, a patient in. And then uh, Louise had a near-death experience with someone pulling a gun on her. So, like, you, <laughs> these are, you know, the, the universe does send you signs that you really need to need to go on a on your grief walk. Um, and and I guess they're always going to be people around, like like myself. Um, who are there to support you and I know Laura you've you've done your own journey but now I need to ask you about um so I I kind of feel this episode 
is bringing a close to 18 years. So Chris went missing in Africa in 2003. And it does feel, yeah, that, that all the little threads have been tied together and I'm being, you know, I can tie the main ribbon on the, on the box at the moment. Um, so that was sort of 18 years worth of, of, of stuff <laughs> to process and release. But when we were talking earlier, weren't we, Laura, about how we met and how you can actually trace where you are now at this minute. Go on, tell, tell the audience where you, where you can sort of trace yourself back to. Well, I mean, I've, I've thought about it since and it probably goes back years and years and years, but, oh, okay. um, <laughs> but there was one specific moment that I it suddenly dawned on me that when I, I moved to Canada for a few years and I had the choice of booking two different flights and they were exactly the same price, just a week apart. And I chose the earlier flight that went the week before. And through that, I met um, a girl called Caroline, who I was only in contact with very briefly while she lived in Vancouver before she moved back uh, home. And she had wanted to join a choir and she'd asked me if I would join a choir with her. So she looked up these choirs and it's very convoluted but there was only one that I could attend because of my work schedule and it was a gospel choir. So fast forward to when I moved back to England and we did talk about the sort of end of this story when we had met at the gospel choir that we were singing with but that in itself was um, really quite a, a strange event that I actually ended up at the gospel choir in the first place because I hadn't even thought to look for a gospel choir when I moved back like there was I just didn't think I was going to find anything that would compare but a bus journey I took once took me past the church where they rehearsed on the one week where they had a sign outside because they'd just done their concert so the chances of me seeing that sign were just so minuscule <laughs> but you know I ended up at this choir and then um, I think it was probably uh, the following term that we then ended up meeting and I think this is what we had talked about in the first episode was that I very nearly didn't show up to the event where we actually met but you know through a series of strange events I actually did feel compelled to go and that's how we ended up talking and yeah so here we are now <laughs> and the thing is about that event that I met you at that was the first time I'd ever told anybody what oh, I'm getting chill. It was the first time I'd ever told anybody what I did. I don't even know what I told you. I probably told you I was a tarot reader or something. Or I yeah, I'm I trying to remember. think. I think it. I was so cagey writer. about what I did. <laughs> I was a what? So spirit writer. I think that's what I remember is that you were oh, writing okay. with spirit, and there was that connection. I um, think I was actually, being quite honest. You were the first person I sort of mentioned that to. And so I, there's another. And, Sorry, <laughs> there's another funny link is I think I said, you know, I'm, I'm so open. I've always been open to that kind of thing. And the reason I'm open to that is because my dad's cousin um, has his own story about, you know, how he, he, he connects with spirit. He didn't ask that for that. It just was in his life from when he was really small. Mm. And he's always been very open about his experiences. And he is the reason I moved to Canada in the first place, um, because he lives there. So that's that's the tracing right the way back. And he's been there since he was 23 years old and he's now 77. So oh. it, it goes way back that, you know, I, I was just ready to hear what you had to say because it's always fascinated me. Always. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, and Chloe, who was on our show a couple of weeks ago, who knew Chris when they were about 10 or so, you know, this goes back. So stories like this and where you are right now, there's stuff that's been brewing all your life to bring you to this moment in time. So if you're sitting here, like you might have just tuned in on the podcast. You might just come to the final episode and just think what on earth of what on earth is all this about? Um, but it might be worth like dipping into other bits of this podcast because you never know you're here for specifically for a reason you were here to listen to 
my voice to Laura's voice to any of the guests you know you're here to hear our story there is something about our story Chris and I that's something for you um and I know I'm I don't want to miss this out because this this has to be in um but all the way through the podcast I've been quite um I haven't talked about our parents very much um because um they don't listen to this podcast okay um I have to be honest yeah Chris is telling me you have to be honest because then you'll realize what the importance of this um so uh it's been very difficult um for me to openly do this podcast and and they mum and dad have never stopped me or Chris from ever doing anything and that is why we've chosen as parents because they have allowed us our freedom they have allowed us you know they they've been amazing um but my dad particularly um just could not cope with the thought of her his son dying um and being in Africa um away and you know we've obviously he'd be he, he has been missing my parents would be would say well particularly dad would say he's been missing for 18 years um and I've always a- attempted to try and tell them about what I do mum's more open but um like it's and it's all but it's always caused um like it's something that the door has been shut on because it's too difficult and it's too you know not ready for the grief walk at all anyway Chris's birthday a couple of days ago um dad phoned me up um because we always phone each other on Chris's birthday and dad said to me um he said um I suppose you've been talking to Chris today and I was like uh yes yes I spent quite a lot of time with Chris this morning Uh, or he would call him Christian with Christian this morning we were chatting about and I was so surprised that he'd even mentioned that it totally took me by surprise and I said um I said to him uh, and then he said he said I I had a chat with Chris too um I was he was he goes cycling um and he had a he went took himself off and he was talking to to Chris as well and it, like it shocked me so much. I said, "Well, did Chris say anything back? Did Christian say anything back to you?" And he said, "Oh, no, no, no. He just, you know, I just told him he was such a clot, you know, <laughs> for for going being in Africa and doing whatever, you know." So it really felt, um, and I wasn't too emotional at the time, but when I came off the call, I realised the significance of that. Um, and I know we haven't talked about it so much, but I know with clients. Um, there's always this concern about um, if you go through a grief walk, if if you are the one in your family who wants to heal their grief um, and you don't, I've got chills, and you don't um, know how your family are going to react to you doing a grief walk uh, and to actually transfer healing and transforming a grief. Because often, you know, grief, particularly if you've got um, a difficult death, I'm going to call them difficult deaths in the family that aren't really talked about, that aren't, um, you know, there's sort of, there's mystery surrounding it, like a missing person. Um, at, like it's so difficult if you are the one person in the family who wants to heal, um, because we know you heal generations going back, you heal future generations. I, I'm just saying to you that please do the grief walk for you because you then allow other people in your family to grieve in their own way oh that's christian um because by you doing your grief even if you're not um try you will never change anybody in their grief process you can't force anybody to actively grieve and go through the process but by you doing it your emotions ripple out to everybody in your immediate family in your larger family in your friends in your community in like it gets bigger and bigger like the world you know you come you do a podcast you talk about your grief you talk how you heal and you heal so many more people people see 
a different perspective. They see it's possible. Like dad has done his healing through me somehow. I don't know how it works, but he has gradually, because I've been able to heal and transform, it has allowed him to do it too. And he has found his own way. And um, that is like, Chris and I, that's our greatest wish, I guess, that people who, like we were, like we were stuck, Chris was earthbound. He couldn't move on into, into spirit where he is now. He was stuck. He was, we were both ghosts of ourselves. You know, Chris was a, he was a, like a phantom ghost um, stuck. He couldn't release himself from being earthbound. I was physically stuck, really. Like I was a ghost of myself. Um, by doing these, this grief walk, you know, we've freed ourselves. We are like free spirits now. Um, we've talked a lot about that, the eagle, um, the eagle image of us both as eagles. You know, we are free spirits now. We, I'm hearing this, like we dance in the sunshine. We ride the waves. We lead with love. Like Chris gave me that. Um, there is every reason to do your grief walk. Like your ancestors, your family, the community that you're in. There has to be grief. There has to be a ritual. There has to be a way of letting it out because you can rebirth. You can heal. You can tra transform. You know, from a missing brother in Africa who disappeared off the face of the earth, this is what we're, we have ended up being able to, to share with you. Um, and, you know, yeah, that's all we can do now is to serve by sharing our story. And I thank everybody who has been on the podcast um you know there's obviously laura um and then we've got um we've got ursula decker we've got sarah um jaffa who was chris's friend who came on we've got rochelle bug uh we've got natasha harris we've got steve homewood uh we've got nikki Sheffras, we've got karen chasen and dan and then karen anderson oh karen anderson the pet loss i've got three minutes or so now, I, at the beginning of our show back in January, we just lost our, our Black Labrador, Duffy. She'd actually, we had to, the vet had to come out on Christmas Eve night, can you believe it, to, um, to take her uh, and allow her to pass over onto the other side. Now, obviously, being involved with grief, I had to take my family, we had about we were we were quite prepared for it because she'd stopped eating but we didn't know when it was going to actually be the end and and she literally on Christmas day in the evening her eyes she actually sat and her eyes went to the corner of the room and she just stared at the corner of the room I'm getting chills like she knew there was something there and I kind of turned to look to see what was there and there was obviously nothing there but she had seen whatever she'd seen and I just then knew right we're gonna have to let her go she's tried she wanted to stay with us and she kept she kept with us even despite she'd stopped eating and she still was with us for you know 10 days or so um but anyway I knew it was time so we had the my young children my husband uh because covid no one else was around for Christmas and we literally I took them through a through a through a um a, a grief ritual with the dog Duffy passed on um, and uh, kept coming back to me in dreams um, with this with this other male dog that that she brought to me. Anyway, that is now Freddie, who is our puppy. And I never shared this in the podcast, but I'm going to now. The day that Duffy passed over on Christmas Day was the day that Freddie was conceived. Now, I didn't know that until a, a month or two ago. Um, but I'll let you draw your own conclusions on that one. Um, Freddie is the male that that Duffy brought into my dream. So there we go. Anyway, so um, yeah, so Karen Anderson. Then we had ha had Desi. Then we had Kerry and and Michael in spirit. Then we had Sophia and and her brother uh, Zuby. And then we had 
uh, Chloe and then we had Louise Adams at the end. So I want to thank all my guests so much and producers Olivia, Jacob and uh, Elvin who's who's doing today's show. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed the last six months. I mean, it's been, I, at, at times I have thought, oh, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> but um and I'm sure Chris felt the same in Africa as we all know he did um but you know I I know the gifts and I thank Chris from the bottom of my heart because I know he's given me all of this um he's given me this podcast as a gift I know that now um and we will move forward um to do whatever we now need to do to serve you um so thank you so much to Laura for joining us thank um you and and your beautiful theme tune which um i don't know whether we'll hear the whole of it um now it would be maybe quite nice i'm just just bringing it on on the on elvin so it might not happen but, um yeah i just want to um send love to everybody out there and thank you very much audience for um for listening over the six months and yeah you can always find me at um hannah velton dot online and um yeah i'll on YouTube and um, on the podcast, you know, it's, you can find it all at um, uh, finder of lost things podcast.com and um, you'll find some show notes and all the links in there for, for the last six months of the series and just dip in wherever you feel drawn because there will always be messages and something for you there. So lots of love and um, hopefully we'll meet again. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you for listening to The Finder of Lost Things. I think we've been triggered so long and so hard by COVID and it's going to carry on. People are getting used to, to stillness and they're getting used to um, more solitude. But how do you use that time for the highest good? This process that we're going to explore will bring back the joy and purpose to life. That wholeness, you know, that sort of harmony and flow and togetherness people are really ready to find their lost parts now you can find me at hannahvelton.online <laughs>